everybody. Um, this is Nikki Rowland and today I am here to talk to you about mini albums. Um, so this week at Scrap Academy we are uh, talking about scrapbooking in all different formats um, and one of those subjects is mini books um, and I decided to take that topic. So um, for somebody who doesn't make a lot of mini books uh, I seem to have an awful lot of them uh, made and collected over the years. Um, so I have been going through all of my mini books for, um, it actually took me a couple of hours uh, to go through them this morning. Um, and I have so, so many and so many different ones um, that I thought I would do a bit of a masterclass in showing you all the different types that are available. I mean, there's many more as well. Um, but so these ones here are the more recent ones that I've made. Um, so I thought I would quickly show you um, some of those. So this is my, um, was a free class that I uh, designed for Go Go Getaway and um, I put the PDF up for free. People could uh, donate to the NHS um, and uh, get the mini book for uh, free, free of charge. Uh, like a whole class it had videos and it had the pdf as well so if you haven't done got that already then head down to the um go go getaway website to pick that up um and you'll find all the details there so this is this one um and the thing about mini books is that they are really interactive um so i have a tassel on this one i have a concertina spine it's bound with a piece of acetate that you can't see um, and the ribbon and it's really interactive so it all has fold outs and pockets and flip downs and there's a paper clip there that's holding that into place um so yeah it is really super um interactive um and a really really lovely thing to make i always love making mini books um i don't make them that often because one they take ages um and secondly um because for ages i was out of love with them because i didn't have anywhere to store them um and i had young kids who would destroy them if they were left out um but um they're a bit older now, so they wouldn't do that. But now, of course, I have a new one. <laughs> He's nearly two and I'm full on destruction mode. So they're all in a box um, away. Although I have my display shelves um, in my craft room that I can actually put mini books on as well, of course. So I have been putting some up there. Um, so that is that one. And that was um, bound with this concertina spine. Um, then I have made another one um, in a similar vein um, to that one, um, but using a different paper collection, an all one paper collection actually. Um, and I've done it slightly differently. I have no tassel and that's because I have a slightly different spine, um, which is a concertina spine again. So it starts off in the same way, but each spine is um, sewn. So my pages um, go around the concertinas and have been stitched in place with a sewing machine, um, which stitched them together effectively. So it meant I have this much more uh, compacted spine. Um, so yeah, again, really interactive, lots of tags and pockets, um, extended pages like out like that. This one has got pockets, that's got a flip up there. Um, um, sorry that the recording stopped there. My mum phoned <laughs> and stopped my phone from uh, recording. Um, so yeah, going back to this mini, mini book. Um, so yeah, super interactive, pockets, flip outs, extended pages, um, flip up that's there, more interactive um, pockets there. Um, this one has a pocket there. And then I've used some cut files on this one there and on the front cover as well. And then I've got this felon page here. Um, and this lovely rainbow, I just it just gives lots of extra texture to have things like that in. Um, so that was that's nice. Um, another pocket there, a little flip out there, um, and another pocket on the back page. This is itself a pocket as well, but I haven't got anything in there. So um, yeah, lots of little interactive things. And that's what I love about mini albums is they are so very interactive. They're not stuck in page protectors. Um, they are there, ready for you to touch and feel and look at nicely. So that's another one like that. Um, and there's a similar one here, which is an older version. I did a few years ago, it was a go-go class. Um, and we have these similar little kind of hidden hinges in here. Um, they're not quite concertina folded, slightly different. And you can see that it's been bound all the way around with a piece of paper or cardstock. Um, so that's another way of doing a very similar style book. And again, interactive, little tags in there. Um, flip ups there. So yeah, lots of things 
that can be put in um, to these mini books and that's what makes them so wonderful um, so that's one type of mini book with those little kind of concertina spines and hinges um, then you have something like this which is actually a cut file so this is the Paige Evans cut file she has quite a few um, mini book cut files available in the silhouette store um, and this one is really cute it's just a concertina it's called heart squash I believe <laughs> um, and you just open it out and you reveal all your lovely pages. So again, it's interactive. So we've got these little flippy ups here. It's quite simple. Um, just the, all of these photos, they all flip up and they all have little tags um, underneath that section there. And my journaling is on the back of those. So that is one about a holiday that I went on and it just kind of squishes back together. So I've only got eight photos in here. Oh no, one, two, three four, five, could have six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. Maximum of 12 photos in this one. Although you could put them on these sections too if you had photos that worked like that. So yeah, this is really easy because it was a cut file. So all the bits were already cut for you effectively. So there's no kind of measuring, scoring. It's all, it's all done. Okay, so that's that type of type of one. You can get cut files that, that you can make into um, mini books. Um, this is a pretty recent one. This is a different idea completely. Um, this is um, a mini book on a scrapbook page, on a layout, on a 12 by 12 layout. Um, so you can see here that I have got um, concentric shapes, all hearts, and I've stitched down the middle there. This is a class tool at GoGo, -Go, but we made it into a proper mini album, but I just simply stuck mine onto a layout. In theory, it should have been um, folded like this, um, and it would have been like, the heart would have been in half. I think it was actually originally a hexagon. Um, but I decided to just stitch it to my layout and have my mini book on my layout so it could go inside a 12 by 12 album. Um, my photos don't fit, but you know, I went with it, it's fine. So that's pretty cute um, and a different way of doing a mini book and getting lots and lots of photos on one um, on one page. Okay, so that's that. Then we have December Daily. So December Daily is a project that um, is designed or concept by Ali Edwards. Um, there's another version which is Shamal's January or Christmas. That wasn't for me. Um, uh, December Daily, much better for me, um, just because I use it like a diary rather than record previous uh, Christmas traditions and things like that. It just, um, the journaling and things didn't suit me in Chamel's, but it does uh, for Ali Edwards. So I do December Daily. I do it every year and I've done it in this format, which is a six by eight format since 2014, I think. So I've got 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, six of these done. And I don't plan to stop anytime soon. I love it. It's my favourite project of the year. I thought I'd quickly show you this one because it's my favourite one. This is from 2016. Um, and the reason it's my favourite one is because it has um, been used with crepe paper, snow and cocoa, which is my favourite all-time winter Christmas collection. So um, I have got it in a 6x8 binder. So this is very similar to regular scrapbooking because um, it's in a proper album and it has page protectors. So you don't have to use page protectors, but I do. Um, so it feels very similar to regular scrapbooking, okay? So um, it's even though it is a mini album and it's a different format, it is actually um, kind of very similar to 12 by 12 scrapbooking. It's just in a different size. Um, so I have lots and lots of fun things in my December daily album. Here's a vellum there, different snowflakes, um, little inserts, and... I make all my base pages in advance um, and then I um, put the photos in and the writing on later on. So this is, I say this is one of my favorite ever December daily albums. I really love it. I did lots of cut files and extra bits and pieces as well. And I just, this collection was just, I just loved it. I'm not sure why I have an empty page there. That's very unlike me. Um, I should probably have something there. <laughs> um, so just keep it going. And then I've got you know, this nice um, divider page there. Um, and oh, this one is my one of my favorite pages. So this is just a, a pocket page protector. Oh, I love this as well, where I've cut out the star on the page. Um, this is a page protector that I've stitched closed. I think, did I use my fuse tool? I think I used a fuse tool. 
um, rather than my sewing machine. Um, and I have pom-poms and glitter and wood veneer shapes. So lovely, just a dividing page, just a bit of extra fun and texture. Oh, and a cut, another cut file there. Very Merry Christmas to you. And um, Fringed Heart, you know, this is, this is why this is my favorite album. <laughs> it's just so awesome. I love all the bits and pieces. Oh, look at them, aren't they cute? Um, a few years ago, they're not as cute now. <laughs> another cut file. Um, and then these divided pages. Oh, that doesn't look finished. <laughs> um, maybe I need to do some more work on this album. <laughs> um, but yeah, so there we go. All done. Um, and I do this, I say every year at the moment, I do this every year. So I have one of these albums for every year. So this, I don't know if you really would consider a mini album because it's absolutely enormous. Um, but it's definitely a smaller version of normal scrapbooking. But I would consider it to be a mini album because it's all in one, um, one kind of binder and project. So there you go. That's a not so mini, mini album. Um, on the subject of um, albums that are in binders, here is another one, which is um, a four by four binder. So this was Jamaica 2016 holiday that we went on with my scrapping besties, Kiri. Hi, Kiri. Um, and this again is in page protectors. So very easy way to do a mini album because the size and format is already sorted out for you. And you just have to do your pages and add them in. So little tags on the binders. I like things to be interactive, even though they are in page protectors. It's obviously not as interactive because they are in page protectors. Um, but like, for example, this photo is, this tag, sorry, is just on the binder clip rather than in a page protector. So that gives, makes it a little bit more tactile. Um, and I have extra photos as well that I just stuck onto um, the binder or holes punched and put onto the binder. Um, so, and then you can add things, tags and different shaped pages and sizes to your little um, binder clips. Um, so yeah, so that's a really um, easy way to do a mini album in a pre-made um, mini folder like that. These, this one I think is Heidi Swap, and she had quite a few of these little tiny ones. I think they were called Instagram albums. Um, so um, there were quite a few of these around. I actually have another one spare that I haven't done anything with yet, so I probably should get on with that. Um, and then we have the most amazing Coptic books ever. I love these, they're just so awesome. Um, completely inspired by Paige Evans, who does a lot of these. Um, and I don't know where I got these covers from. Somebody gave them to me. I think they ended up with spare ones for some reason. They'd already had, did they, I think they may not have had holes drilled. I think I had to drill the holes. <laughs> and I painted the cover and then I made the book, so I put this all the signatures together. Now, this book is so beautiful, I can't use it. Um, <laughs> so, um, the problem with Coptic books is that even though they are absolutely stunning and they look beautiful on a shelf because of the fantastic binding, um, is that they're so big that you can't really put loads in. So, if I had filled every... There's so many pages in here. Look how many pages there are in there. If I filled every page... Um, with um, photos and embellishments, the size of the book would probably be like this. <laughs> so I probably will never use this as a scrapbooking album. I could just randomly stick photos in, but um, I, what I, the re how I did it was I made it a notebook. So I have got blank pages inside pattern papers so that I have got places to write and make lists and notes and things like that. So I actually haven't used it yet because it's so lovely I can't bring myself to, to use it. <laughs> um, but it's really, really beautiful. So that is a Coptic bound book. Um, and then this is another version that we made in a Go Go Getaway class different collection and the reason we may I wanted to show you this one is because it's on a smaller scale um, and it's completely handmade by we don't have to have wood so this these are wooden front covers that are kind of specialist made um, and this one is not made with wood it's just made with a piece of chipboard um, and then it's covered in pattern paper and you can see that it works just as well you don't have the chunkiness on the um, each side um, but I don't think that's a problem so if this is a barrier if you can't get hold of these wood pieces then you can absolutely do it just with normal um, pattern papers and this one I did put some very flat embellishments and things inside um, but again it's so huge how could I ever fill this with um, 
you know, one story or one thing. Um, so I would probably consider this to be like a traveler's notebook and I could use chapters. So this first chapter, so you have basically Coptic books are divided into signatures. So you can see that is one, that is one signature. You can see it better from this angle. Can you see that? So that's one, that's another one. So I'd probably use each signature as a separate um, book. And this first one I have filled with photos of the day I went to visit Downton Abbey, the castle. So just small amounts of photos, embellishments, a little bit of journaling, a bit more pattern paper, photos, really simple and no bulk, <laughs> because, apart from a few puffy stickers, uh, because I was just, and that's the end of that signature. So that would be, um, you know, a nice way of filling up a Coptic book. Consider it to be different chapters. Okay, so, that, and then we love all the charms on the side. They're always gorgeous. Okay, so that is Coptic book binding, mini books. Um, and then we go back in time. So, um, this is a really simple mini book um, that I made. I think it was a kit. Um, it wasn't from GoGo. I think I bought it from a shop. Um, and it was super easy to make. And this is probably one of, if, you're, if you've never made a mini book and you want to start with something simple, then book rings are your friend um, because you don't have to worry about clever binding. You literally make your pages and then punch holes and then stick book rings in um, and that will hold them all together. So this is just super simple. All the pages are the same size apart from this bit that sticks up here. They're all the same size. So they're just, um, they're quite thick. So I think they're chipboard and have just been covered in pan papers. So my goodness, this is years old. <laughs> um, and it's a little bit interactive, but not majorly so. Um, it was a very early mini book that I made and very, very easy and simple to do. Um, so got a few pockets, journaling behind the pocket. You could have more photos on the back. Um, so, um, so yeah, that's a very, very simple and easy mini book to make. And on that note, here is another very simple mini book that I made. Again, another early mini book. Um, and this one is just bound with washi tape. So these are all individual pieces of card and they are just stuck together with strips of washi tape, yeah? So that is a super duper easy way of binding a mini book together. Really, really simple. Um, if you wanted just to have a go at, at something like that was really super simple. Okay, so they are easy mini albums. <clears throat> then we have envelopes. Envelopes are great for making um, mini books with. Um, We'll put that one to one side for a minute. This one here, um, I made, it was uh, designed at a go-go getaway retreat, one of the early ones that I went to. I can't remember who designed it. Um, but uh, these are office envelopes. They have openings here, but they have nothing inside. So each envelope is simply um, done with an eyelet on the sides, and we have book rings to bind it together. Um, and you just have this long... Um, style of mini book here. So I have put a few photos in of when we went to New York. Um, this is a little stamp and then covered with glossy accents, I think. Um, that was the technique. Um, so yeah, so really, again, extremely simple way of making a mini album. Grab some envelopes, put holes in them, stick them together with book rings. Super duper easy. Um, and then I recreated that mini book um, later on. Here it is. And instead of using Oh, I think I did use envelopes. They are envelopes. I thought I'd made the pockets. You could make pockets, of course, out of cardstock. Um, but I think I did do envelopes. And then I've done exactly the same thing. Two book rings and eyelets all the way through. But I have things in the pockets. So I have just got journaling on both sides of that one. I could so do that with this one as well, but it wasn't part of the class. So... There we go, and more in here. All the journaling is on the inside because at the time I printed everything in six by four. Um, so um, these took up most of my, my photos took up most of my layout there. So all my journaling just went in on the inside. So yeah, it's, it's an easy, again, another very, very easy style mini book to make. Um, and then we tie lots of ribbon and things around the book rings, really cute. Okay, so that's that. Um, this one was a bit more complicated. So this is an envelope mini book that I designed and made myself. Um, and boy, did it cause me some issues. <laughs> 
Um, I wanted it to be super interactive. My envelopes, I don't think that one is an envelope, that's cardstock. I have an envelope there that I've punched um, eyelets through. And then inside this pocket, so inside every page has a photo or a, something. So that comes out there. That was just my front cover. But I think these are all made of envelopes. So this is a whole page. Look how thick that is. <laughs> um, and each one, this has a, this, these are all envelopes. So this is an envelope, this is an envelope, and the whole page itself is made from an envelope. This is a class that I run um, and uh, really com confused everybody who um, came to class to make it. I don't think I could ever make it again because it was just so complex. <laughs> But again, super interactive, which is the main thing that I love most about mini books. Um, they have so many photos in. And then this side, I have a pocket here. And there is my photo in there. Um, so yeah, lots and lots of interactive stuff going on here. Different size pages. More, more, more pockets. Um, anyone remember this punch tab, round tab punch by stamping up? It was one of my most used punches ever. So yeah, um, very, very interactive and a fun way of making a mini book. Um, but don't ask me to explain how I did it. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but envelopes are a great source. Um, here's another style. Um, there were lots of mini albums going around um, that were um, fold, folded things, fold out things. So this one is a star and you open it out like this. There we go, how cool is that? Um, and you can put that on display somewhere, but I just love the, how it folds down and it's in this neat little cute book. Um, but, um, but yeah, so each page has got more of those stars and that's what makes it really good. So yeah, cute, hey? I wasn't just fat there, I promise. I was like five months pregnant. <laughs> This is our last holiday without children. Yeah, so yeah, that's another cool little project to make. Good fun, definitely, definitely good fun. And I have lots and lots of fold out books like that, it's a bit similar, um, that I wanted to show you. So if you want something simple, this one was one of the easy ones I made. I made this at a go go, I can't remember who designed it. Um, but it's literally two pieces of card. So it's a, one piece of cardstock, 12 by 12, and it's cut into two pieces, five inches, that's that way, by 12. So basically cut it in half and trim a bit off. Um, and then those two strips were stuck together. So this is one strip here, and this is the other one. It goes all the way around there. Um, and look how easy it is. The back is just stuck together. This piece here is stuck, there's two pieces there. Um, and then these ones are just left flapping. <laughs> um, so, and that gives you lots of pages. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And you could use the back as well. It's got blue tack on because it was up on the wall. <clears throat> um, but yeah, that's a super simple mini book that's got some folds in. It looks really cute and very easy to recreate. So something like that. Um, then we move on to things that are slightly more complicated. Um, so this was a wedding we went to and you can see how it's six by six and you open it out and then this bit folds down. Ah, so we have this whole 12 by 12 layout effectively with these folds in that just folds back up again. There we go. I don't think I did the other side. No, I didn't. Um, so that is another cool um, method. So that is a 12 by 12 piece. And then you have one other piece that's this size, which ends up being your cover. So lots of different ways to make kind of foldy out albums. Um, this is another one. Again, it's six by six. Oh, that's when I was beautiful at my wedding. <laughs> So you can see that this kind of, oh, how does it work? It's kind of like flip-flops. Oh, there we go. <laughs> so you see how you have these interactive pieces here and the way it folds. It's just another cool way 
of creating something that folds is interactive in that respect. I really love this one. It's very sweet. Like you now you've got this display and you fold it that way and you've got this display. This one is that, that page and then you fold it and you end up with this page. So it's quite clever. It's quite a cool way of doing it. And then I've just made front and back covers um, and then put ribbon around it to hold it together. So that's another folded mini album. And then this one was, this was my wedding invitation. This was what my wedding invitations look like, looked like. <laughs> and then inside, I just wanted to make a small momentum um, to keep about our wedding because these were like our wedding invitations. And this again is kind of interactive, the way that this folds out. Can you see how that is separate from there? And you pull that out and you pull that one out and they kind of float around. And they keep going, yeah. So that's pretty cool. That's just again, there are the templates for all of these are on the internet somewhere. You'll be able to find them. Um, this one is an extension of this one. So this is very basic, um, but this one is a little bit more complicated. Lots more, a few more layers, but ultimately it's the same principle. So there's one piece of card here, and then we have a middle section here which is another piece of card, which goes across there, and it folds out, this folds out, and this opens up. So again, you just have interactive stuff going on. I don't know if it's that way first. That way first, there we go. Um, tags, oh, they don't, I don't think they come out. Either that or they're a bit stuck. Oh, they do come out. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, you know, again, you can get really creative with fold outs. Um, and I just, yeah, I love how that, that ends up looking. And there's a pretty old school now. <laughs> it's made a long time ago. So that's another one like that. I have another one here, which I've taken to another level. And this one I've actually punched holes in so that I can store it inside my albums if I wanted to. Um, this one hasn't made it inside an album. I don't know why, but it hasn't. Um, so this one opens this way and then all the binding is under this strip here. So it's just a different way of making a similar mini book to those, but um, I have all different size pages. They're higgledy piggledy. Um, this is the kind of mini album I love that's got lots of different things to look at, very interactive. Um, that one opens out there. There you go. So yeah, cute, very cute. Easy, but cute. So I do like the way these little books look. And these are all, the, all of those ones I just showed you were six by six. Um, and then I have a really basic one here that I thought I would show you in case you were new to mini books and wanted to um, try something simple. So I have this is just the piece of cardstock that binds, that holds it all together. Um, and this flips open like this. And I have just a normal photo up there. And then this are, these are all the pages. And they're just bound here with um, eyelets and some ribbon. They are stuck as well, but... Um, bound with those as well so they don't go anywhere and then really simple just decorated every page so I mean these are really old now but um, very easy is my point so many books don't have to be complicated they can be very straightforward um, and you could obviously modernize this design because it's pretty old now but um, yeah you could definitely make that more modern Okay, and that just slides in there and also slides under there. So cute, hey? Yeah, very cute. Um, I wanted to show you this one. This is one that I made at a Go Go Getaway retreat. It was designed by Louise Fortune. Um, and even though my book is not finished and I'll probably never finish it now, I wanted to show you this clever way of closing. So this book has been made with chipboard covers and it's been covered and the binding has been covered in fabric tape and it's closed with these two bulldog clips which is pretty cool which is what I wanted to show you and it has ribbon going through both of them so you don't lose one um, and they're attached together and you just unclip and then that opens your book how cool is that so that is a clever way of closing a book keeping a book closed um, and I also wanted to show you that this has been made with one of these office clips so if anyone who works in an office will have seen these um, like they oh open up like this and they have and this has got page protectors in so just a different way of using something mundane like an office supply to make a mini book so
so and that gives you some really good that's really strong and won't go anywhere um, and these are page protect six by four page protectors and then we fuse them with the fuse tool oh I just lost one off the back of my table um, so yeah that's just another type there unfortunately it's not finished maybe I should sit down and finish it I don't often have unfinished projects um, okay and then we have shaped albums things like this um, that these are both done at a go go getaway um, by the way this one I really love it's all the pages are the same shape they're a jar we had a template and we cut them out um, and then it's just bound by putting holes in the top and hanging some twine through so of course you could have a book ring in there um, but if you want to do something a bit different then the twine works really well and then you could hang it up of course the front is a shaker pocket we have stitching around the edges um, and then each page has just got a few little bits on so this one's not so interactive doesn't have any flip outs but it's still pretty cute okay and this one um, this one was a go-go one and designed by Louise Fortune and there we go oh if I can get into it and this one is just an accordion fold so it just concertinas out hey so there we go you can see all the pages there and then we added these little flippy bits um, which are just so we had a template for the tags how do we bind them oh, I think it's yeah, so we had these were all separate pieces, and then we stuck bits of paper or card in between each one, um, and then put the layers on top, and that held the binding in place. So then you end up with this brilliant accordion style book that folds up really nicely, and then we can add the flippy bits as well. So, and then the back is done as well. So that's nice. Oh, put it together. There we go. Mad Max, that one's called. That's when he was mad. He's still a bit mad, to be fair, but he was madder then. All right, so there you go. It's a cute book, really cute book there. Um, okay, this one I just want to show you. This is one of my favourite ever um, go-go albums designed by Eileen. Um, this was done, oh goodness, when was it done? 2013, 14? 15 maybe I can't remember <laughs> this is one of my favorite mini books of all time I really really loved it it's called my life in numbers and the idea was to pick numbers about your life so 31 years old That's right so when was that I'm 37 now so this was done six years ago um, and write about how all these numbers are significant to your life so one gorgeous husband 18 months old three years old, one cup of coffee a day, 24 cupcakes, uh, 146 kisses I give my children each week, <laughs> 31 days spent in Florida this year. Um, so yeah, you can see the, the concept was really cool. Um, I just love that concept. And then these photos pop out, yeah? So they just come out of there. And then this is epic. This will blow your mind because it blows mine every time. So we have these sliders that come out like this. How clever is that? I don't think I could remember how to do it, <laughs> but uh, it just shows you what amazing ideas are out there um, online and in people's brains to make those kind of um, hinges. There we go. Um, that one comes out. Yeah, we've got more photos behind. And it just slides on there. And that's another one of those sliders. They're so clever. It's so clever. I just love it. I say this is one of my favourite um, mini books of all time because of these sliders and just the whole concept of my life in numbers. It was just a really interesting book to to do. This seems big, so that comes out of there. Oh, that's a flippy out. And there we go. So I do love interactive mini books. That's another slider. Um, this one comes out. And yeah, and that's it. So that, I say, is one of my favourite mini books ever. Um, that looks like it's concertina bound. And it has a piece of, bind Oops, piece of binding that goes all the way around the edge. And it's tied together with some twine. And a little tip. 
If you're using ribbon or twine and you don't want the edges to fray like these, um, put a bit of glossy accents or some other strong adhesive um, onto the end and let them dry and then they are solid and they will not fray. So that's just a little tip. Okay. Oh, I'm still not done. <laughs> this is another one, more interactive, and this is um, a little box actually, which is also a mini album. So this is when my baby boy was born, actually the old one, so he's seven now. Um, so that is a nice little keepsake that can sit up like this on the side, and this drawer opens out. And in here, we have a number of things about him and when he was born. So this is a little keepsakes pocket, which is a bit broken because I've got something that's way too big in there. So his belly button clip, um, and some tags and his wristband. And then we have the photos on there, on the cards. So yeah. Um, and these also, the point of these, I think, back in there, is that you can change the photo. So you wouldn't put the keepsakes up. But if I wanted to put that one up, for example, I'd just sit that on there. So I could change the photo. Baby Max, there we go. Yeah, so just another kind of fun thing to do. Um, a different type of mini album. It is a mini album in itself, even though it's this drawer as well. Probably doesn't need to be as thick as that. Could have been much thinner. Um, so that's another type. And then I wanted to show you this one. Remember this one, Sheena? Um, she taught this at a GoGo -Go Day Away event, um, and this was a brilliant album. Um, we received a set of watercolour paints uh, for as part of the class, and this is the box that the paints came in. And then we made a mini album to fit inside the box. So this one has its own casing, which is pretty cool. And this is really interactive too, so it's obviously slightly strange size because it's designed to go into the box. Um, probably wouldn't make a mini book of this size normally. Um, but yeah, interactive. So we have flip ups, we have pull outs. There we go. Ooh. And um, it's bound by just uh, sticking and then tying ribbon through two holes. And we have a little waterfall bit here, flips up. Yeah, little tag, you can see on both sides. And another flip up here. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. So I want to show you that one. Um, but I think you get the point that mini books are interactive. <laughs> so there's lots of stuff going on in mini books and they don't have to be complicated to look awesome. Um, and then finally, oh no, not finally, but almost finally, I wanted to show you this type of mini book. Now I used to love these. Um, they are wooden kits that you can buy. Met various people do off the page things like this. Um, maybe, I think Kaiser Craft do them. Um, and um, they are mini album sets and they are wooden and you have to decorate them. They come completely naked and you decorate them. So I have great fun, I've had great fun making these. They're bound with um, book rings and you put ribbon on the book rings and they're just really cute. So I love them. They're very bulky and you don't get a lot in them. <laughs> Um, but they are a lovely project to do. Something like this is what I um, would maybe take on holiday with me to work on. Um, my daughter loves doing these types of things as well. So, so yeah, some of them you can buy in kits with papers and things. Otherwise, you can just add your own papers. Um, but yeah, they're really lovely books and all nice and chunky. And get them in different shapes. So I've got a house here. Um, so this is all about our family and our house. Little tiny photos that sit in the windows. I think it's so cute. Um, and there we go, it's on the final page there. So yeah, our little house charm, cute. Um, so those, I think I'm done. I think they're all my mini books to show you. I have loads more, but that is the majority. So now I'm gonna go and make a mini book. Um, and I've decided to look long and hard and found um, a mini book that I have never made before. And it's a cut file by Paige Evans. Um, and I've already cut it out here. You can see on this piece of paper, and I have orange spots on the back. Um, and it, the way it works is you cut this on the silhouette um, and then all the cutting and scoring is done for you already. And now you just have to decorate it. And it comes with these little pieces as well. 
Um, I've cut them in green. I'm just going to use them as templates and these aren't going to be stuck in. Oh, actually, it doesn't go this way around. It goes that way around because you've got little, you can't see them, but little dashes there. Um, and then these layers, um, you cut in whatever colours you want and then they layer really nicely and sit on here inside these boxes perfectly. So I will have those in lots of different colours um, on there. And it also comes with a bow. So this piece in theory somehow goes through these slits that are pre-made. I might not use this. I might use a piece of ribbon or something. But the idea is you poke that through here. And then when you have folded up your mini book, which folds up like this, uh, these buns go in first. And that goes down. When you have, then you have this cute little box. Isn't that cute? And then this, in theory, is your binding. So you have that there and you put like a Velcro sticky on there or something. Um, and then you have this bow that, you're, that you'll make. And again, I've cut these in green because I'm not sure what colours I wanted to use them in. Um, but uh, I'm going to then use just use them as a template. Oh, that's a bit strange. How does that work? Does it go like that? Yeah. That goes around there. And it sits on there. And that is supposed to be your closure. So that will stick onto there. I would sew that. I would probably sew that. Okay. And then that's the little cute little mini book. So that is what I'm going to go and do. Um, I'm going to speed it up and do it like a normal process video. Um, and um, yeah, let's uh, see what we make. So thank you for watching this. If you're still with me, good on you. This is a really long video um, and uh, lots and lots of mini books. So now you've got to watch the, now you've got to watch the process video as well. <laughs> so you're a trooper if you're still here. <laughs> um, yeah. So thank you very much for joining me and I will see you in the process video. Okay, so now we move on to the uh, second part of this video, which is to make this mini book. So um, as you can see, um, I've already cut the mini book um, template. Uh, it's a Paige Evans cut file um, and uh, I've just cut it from a piece of pattern paper. Um, and what I'm starting off by doing is my front cover. So because my front cover um, is going to um, be on the front. <laughs> um, I feel the need to get that sorted first before I start working on the inside. Um, also, it's entirely likely that I will need to stitch through um, part of this, so therefore I want to create a, a piece on its own that will then stick onto the front cover so that if I have done any stitching, that will be hidden behind the layer. Um, so this book is about Harmony Week, so at school or homeschool, um, we had uh, Harmony Week. So this is work set by school um, in response to the uh, Black Lives Matter um, riots that are going on. Um, the school wanted to promote um, harmony, uh, diversity and inclusion. Um, so that is what all of the topics that week were based around. Great, some great life lessons there. Um, and um, yeah, really a, a, a week of fun activities as well um, and some uh, important lessons learned. Um, so um, this week, this whole book is about Harmony Week and all the activities that we undertook during that time. Um, and I have lots of photos of the schoolwork they did and the activities that they did. Um, they had lots and lots of fun doing it. Um, so um, that's what the book is about and that's why the title is Harmony. Um, you can see I've added one of those really lovely crepe paper magical forest bows to the top of my uh, front cover. Um, and right now what I'm working on is the um, orange strip that I'm going to put through. Now I wanted to have my strip uh, much wider than the green one that I've got cut that was the one that came with the cut file itself. So I measured the length um, but then I actually made the width much much wider. Um, I've also cut a slit um, in the back of the book to um, house my uh, giant strip um, and I've threaded it through. So in theory um, the orange piece should be inside the mini book and the two other orange pieces should come out and, and wrap around. Um, so that's kind of how it works. <clears throat> um, in the end I actually decided to do something slightly different and I change it around a bit. Um, but, um, but yeah, um, I just wanted now to move on to the underneath of my front cover. Um, and the reason for that is because the front cover itself is going to um, lift up um, and um, it's going to reveal um, something underneath. So part of the album itself. So this is the only part of the back of the album that I'm decorating. Um, and uh, I'm just, it, but the only reason I'm doing that is because 
um, little bits of it show out um, from behind my front cover so effectively creating a big cluster there for my front cover to sit sit in front of um, so I've just added the globe which is the Vicky Bootin um, piece of ephemera and um, Hello Sunshine bag uh, with the camera sticking out of it and a little label sticker which I'll write the date on um, so okay uh, that's my front cover sorted um, I've skipped a bit um, forwards in the process now and you can see that I have my whole album open wide on the table um, and what I've done is I have cut um, another piece of pattern paper so the pink and white striped paper um, to the panel sizes so I used the templates uh, that came with the cut file I wasn't overly happy with them um, they were a bit too small um, and I wanted them a bit bigger so I recut them I resized them um, and cut myself some more templates and, uh, and, and went ahead like that so I have all the squares um, and then I have the rounded pieces as well um, and I've uh, cut those um, on I just I've just done them by hand so I cut a template and I, I cut them out using my pencil and a and pair of scissors and I just layered those over um, each panel and I'm just working out what's going to go where so um, on the curved panels I've cut a second curved panel uh, from two journaling cards um, so one at the bottom right and one at the top left um, I've cut extra um, curved panels there and you can see what I'm doing there is I'm creating a, um, a little flip up um, and I've just done um, that by adding washi tape so the two pieces uh, together so the smaller um, colored piece and the um, pink piece that's going on the background I've just stuck them together using washi tape I've put a piece on either side um, and that gives me a lovely little flip out um, the pink piece will be stuck directly to the um, to the background um, uh, and the flip up therefore will be the bit that opens out so I'm just doing that for the bottom right and the top left um, I've also just on the two um, sections either side of the middle um, I've added a pocket so I've just taken a piece of pattern paper and um, I've chopped it with my scissors um, it's the same width as the pink and white panel and then I've just cut them at a slant going downwards um, and they both taper in towards the middle um, and they are going to be pockets I'm going to stitch those on my sewing machine and they will then uh, act as uh, little pockets so that's what I'm doing there so basically this whole this point here I'm just working out what's going on what panel um, so I've worked out I worked out on a rough piece of paper that I wanted the flip ups to be in the top right and bottom sorry top left and bottom right um, and then I want shakers on the other opposite corners as well so the bottom left and top right are going to be shaker pockets which is what I'm doing right now um, and then I wanted pockets on either side of the middle and I wanted the middle bit to be a flip up and I wanted the top to be a pocket and the bottom to be a pocket different types of pockets um, so um, yeah I have a real mixture of things going on here and now I just have to put it into action and having that piece of paper with some notes on really helped um, keep me focused because when you're dealing with a little project like this um, you can get uh, carried away with ideas and you want to do so many things and then it's not coherent um, so I wanted it to uh, make sure I wanted to make sure that everything made sense so things were kind of matching so I have like the symmetry of the two pockets either side and then have the opposite diagonal corners uh, for shakers and for the flip ups so um, I just wanted to make sure that I remember to do those things and put them in the right places and that's why having a little plan uh, worked really well um, so I have these two tags at the top that I'm determined to put in a pocket but the tags are too long um, so I'm going to cut those down um, I initially thought I could just have them poking out but then when I curl my book together um, they were then going to get bent and they weren't going to work so they needed to be cut smaller I was thinking about putting them underneath the pink panel but in the end I decided to go for this journaling card which is a really pretty uh, 3 by 4 journaling card which I just trimmed down um, and then sew on my sewing machine so I've made it slightly smaller than the um, pink and white square um, and then I'm just sewing it round on my sewing machine I also use a circle punch there it is now to create a little area at the top um, like a little notch out of it so I can easily uh, reach in and get the um, tags from inside or, or also just makes it more obvious that it's a pocket and it's a nice little design feature too uh, it's a great way of using your circle punches um, I should also mention that at the bottom pocket so the bottom middle section I've cut a small envelope um, that I actually um, took uh, from my silhouette store um, uh, it was just a 
a cut file available on the Silhouette store. So I have cut um, a little pocket, uh, it's really straightforward envelope um, and uh, stuck that down. So now I have a little flip up uh, that I can, uh, that acts as a little envelope tile style pocket. So just an another version of a pocket really. Um, so I'm just finishing my um, shakers. So I have cut a piece of acetate uh, slightly smaller than my um, pink and white base and then I have stitched it around on my sewing machine um, and then I've just put sequins in and Bramble Fox perspective so I have some a little rainbow I have some little stars and starburst style stars as well um, and they uh, are then I've stitched up the top edge um, as well um, so um, that way all of my uh, shaky bits are um, contained nicely within their pockets and then I'm just going to stick those um, directly to um, the um, orange uh, background. So that's one piece of, pe of cardstock, a smaller piece of acetate and then I have just filled it with sequins, stitched it up and then I can stick that directly onto my uh, background there. So I have two shakers, top um, and bottom in the diagonal, opposite diagonal corners. So they're looking really cute. They are sequins by Spiegel Mum Scraps and Perspectives by Bramble Fox. Um, and that's it. So um, there's nothing else in there, just those uh, couple of things. Um, so now I'm trying to work out my um, orange uh, piece. So that bit that uh, goes, wraps around the whole album, here it is. Um, oh, by the way, uh, off camera, um, I added some pom-pom trim around my front cover. Um, and uh, I double wrapped it in pom-pom trim because the pom-poms were a bit too far apart. So I just bordered my um, front cover with um, some pom-pom trim and then it was a bit messy on the other side so I just stuck a piece of um, orange paper um, on uh, on there as well to cover it up, cover up the back. But that just gave me a bit of extra texture and interest on the front of my cover. Um, and at this point you can see that this is where I decided not to stick my um, orange piece through my album I decided to stick it on the outside so I stuck it first and then I added two rows of stitching and what I'm doing right now is just pulling the threads through to the middle of the album um, and then I'm going to stick my uh, white and pink panel um, over the top I've also got a piece of gold vellum speciality vellum um, in the middle section too um, and that is just um, a little flip up as well it opens up to the left hand side um, and then inside uh, my pockets I've got some photos I've started adding, I've added all my photos now um, I've flipped fast forwarded a little bit um, and added all my photos and what I'm going to do now that's pretty much it done but I'm going to go away and finish embellishing and then I'm going to show you a uh, full flip through um, of the finished album once it's completely finished and um, this is just a little vel velcro fastener um, that I'm putting um, in place and I am going to stitch them through on the sewing machine so that they don't come off because they're just sticky um, and they will easily just um, come off so uh, that is how I fastened the mini book together. And that's it, that's it complete. Um, so I so say, yeah, I'm gonna go away and add some embellishments, just stickers and things, and then I'm gonna show you the flip through. Right, so here is the finished album. Um, I, you can see that I added, um, I have the pom-pom trim going all the way around the front cover. Um, I've got my bow on the front and my lovely title that I have stitched through as well. And then uh, instead of um, poking it through the slit that was in the back, um, I decided to wrap the orange around the whole thing instead and sew it in place. Um, I just preferred the look. My slit wasn't very good, so um, I just preferred the look. So I'm just going to open it up here. I've got a little Velcro sticky dot there um, and I've sewed through each of those on the sewing machine to make sure that they don't go anywhere because they're just a bit sticky and they'll, um, they'll come off. I've covered the inside of my pom-pom um, trim with a piece of pan paper and then I can now open up the album. So, there we go. So that is the um, album as a whole. Um, I have got these two pockets here um, open up and then we have um, a photo there, a little bit of journaling and some stickers. Then down here, this one um, opens and then we also have a um, flip out there. So a few bit more information, a bit more, um, two, more, another photo, two photos in there, plus journaling. Um, and then I have these two here, which are pockets. So we have 
um, journaling on this little piece here, nothing on the back, and then two photos, sorry, three photos, um, two pieces, one has got a photo on the back and the other one is plain. So I could add another photo or put some more journaling there. So they just sit in those pockets. And this one is the same. Um, but except that I have nothing on the back, just pattern paper. Oh, and this, oh, they're both, sorry, they're both little books. So this one opens up like that. So I've got my journaling there and photos. And then this one is all photos. Yeah, so lots of little photos there, very cute. And so I have got more room on the back as well uh, to add more if I wanted to. Um, and then this one here opens up and I've got some more journaling there explaining what this week was all about. Um, then up here I have two tags and I have photos on there and a little bit of journaling, although not very much. They're plain on the back, but I could add some more journaling and some more photos there if I wanted to. Um, and then I have my two shaker pockets, which are really cool, filled with uh, Bramble Fox perspectives and um, Spiegel Mum scraps sequins. Um, I have another perspective there. And then this little pocket here, which is that little envelope pocket. Um, just open it up. Um, and inside I have these photos. So I have four pieces. Um, these ones have all have photos on the back as well. And that one just has my journaling. So really, really cute. A very cute little mini book with lots of scope for photos, considering how tiny it is. And I put another little vellum sticky on here. Um, I haven't stitched through that on my sewing machine um, just because this one does not have to hold as much together that the other one does. So it doesn't have as much pressure on it. Um, and that's it, all done. So um, you can't see uh, where I had the orange piece going through it before. Um, you wouldn't have been able to see that anyway because I have this uh, piece on there. Um, but um, in the end, I decided that it would be better if it was stitched on the outside. I like it on the outside um, rather, than, and I prefer it wider as well rather than um, the really skinny one that it, it came with. Um, okay, so that is my completed mini book. I just finished off with adding some stickers. Um, not a lot. I stuck with everything was completely flat. So I've got no raised embellishments at all because this book is pretty big already. Um, so um, yeah, just flat stickers. And I had lots of these little cute label stickers. So I've just managed to utilize those um, quite a lot um, inside everywhere. Um, here and here and here and here. And then in here, loads of label stickers. Label stickers are great for mini books. Um, oh yeah, and that's it. All done. So it folds all you for oops you fold all of the um bits up like that first of all and then the sides fold in first because these creases here are not as wide there we go they go in first and then this one here is the widest so that goes up there that one oops that one goes down and then that comes up to meet the front cover and that's it all done how cute very, very cute. Um, okay, thank you so very much for joining me today. I hope you have enjoyed um, this class and this um, little mini book that I've made um, and this flip through, thrip, I can't speak, flip through at the end. Bye. <laughs>